Does your mind ever feel something like this? You're such an idiot. Why you so be like you? You don't know what you think, man. What you do if you don't have a job? This video will make it feel like this. I promise you this isn't some band-aid for your mental health that will give you temporary relief. I'm going to tell you about a little-known scientific process that monks like myself use every day to bring our minds under control. There are three methods to this process that I will go over in detail, but first let's understand the problem of the mind a little bit more deeply. These days it seems like everyone has dealt with some sort of mental health issue. I know I have. For years I struggled with depression and social anxiety. But it wasn't until I began practicing something called Krishna consciousness that I finally felt like I was starting to make real progress towards being mentally healthy. One thing that has become crystal clear to me in my time as a monk is that your mind can either be your best friend or your worst enemy. And for 99% of people these days, it's their worst enemy. Depression, anxiety, addiction, suicide, apathy. The list of mental health problems we face goes on and on. What's causing this? Social media? broken families, the economy, diet, hustle culture, everything? How do we fix such a seemingly insurmountable problem? You may think that a monk is simply running away from the problems of the world in order to find peace, but if the problem is in your own mind, then where can you really run? Actually, as monks, one of our main focuses is how to bring the mind under control. All the senses have been under the control of the mind since time immemorial, and the mind himself never comes under the sway of any other. He is stronger than the strongest, and his godlike power is fearsome. Therefore, anyone who can bring the mind under control becomes the master of all the senses. Believe it or not, this is a problem that has plagued humanity since time immemorial. Our modern lifestyle isn't the cause of this problem, but it is pouring fuel on the fire. The problem boils down to control. Consider for a moment, which is in control? You or your mind? After reflecting on this at the monastery for the past year, I can see how my mind has been controlling me for all 30 years of my life. If my body gets hungry, my mind forces me to go find something to eat. If I get attracted to a woman, my mind pulls me to go talk to her. If I feel bored, my mind forces me to turn on the TV or scroll through social media. Before, it was easy to trick myself into thinking these were all things that I actually wanted to do. But you really get a glimpse of how controlled you are when you try to quit a bad habit, as I'm sure you've experienced. The logical side of you knows that you should just stop doing it, but some invisible force keeps pulling you to do it, seemingly against your will. What I learned is that the mind is either a terrible master or a wonderful servant. There is no middle ground. And the only way out of this predicament is learning how to reliably control the mind. But how? This brings us to the three methods I mentioned earlier. But before we jump into method number one, an important thing to understand is that all three methods have to be used together or else you won't see results. The first method is mantra meditation. I'm sure you're familiar with the word meditation and a mantra is something you repeat verbally over and over again. Mantra is a Sanskrit word which means to deliver the mind from suffering. The mantra I'm about to tell you has been declared by the Vedic literatures and countless sages to be the only means of delivering us from the clutches of the mind in this day and age. The mantra goes like this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You can rewind and watch it a few times until you memorize it. These words are not normal words. They are the names of God and are infused with spiritual potency. By simply chanting this and deeply focusing on the sound of the mantra, the mind is guaranteed to come under control. We chant this for two hours every day at the monastery, but you can start with 10 minutes and you'll see instant results. This mantra will be explained in much more detail in an upcoming video, but for now, let's move on to method number two. The mind is compared to a wild horse. If you don't know how to tame a wild horse, naturally you hire someone who does and learn from them. A spiritual master, also known as a guru, is someone who has perfected the art of controlling their mind and teaches others how to do it as well. They come in an unbroken line that traces back thousands of years and has preserved the ancient teachings of the Srimad Bhagavatam. This text presents the most authentic and effective method by which many have brought their mind under control. 
This uncontrolled mind is the greatest enemy of the living entity. If one neglects it or gives it a chance, it will grow more and more powerful and will become victorious. Although it is not factual, it is very strong. It covers the constitutional position of the soul. O king, please try to conquer this mind by the weapon of service to the lotus feet of the spiritual master and of the supreme personality of Godhead. Do this with great care. The Bhagavatam is confirming that controlling the mind has always been a problem for us, but it also quickly offers the solution, the weapon of service to the lotus feet of the spiritual master and of the supreme personality of Godhead. Additionally, in the commentary, Srila Prabhupada says, There is one easy weapon with which the mind can be conquered. Neglect. The mind is always telling us to do this or that. Therefore, we should be very expert in disobeying the mind's orders. Gradually, the mind should be trained to obey the orders of the soul. It is not that one should obey the orders of the mind. There are two important takeaways from this. First, the secret to success in taming the mind is summarized in one word, neglect. If we simply ignore the mind's constant attempts to make us do things that we don't actually want to do, we can become victorious. But becoming a vegetable and doing nothing isn't possible. Buddhists try to control the mind by negating everything and reaching a state of nirvana, where there is no desire and you don't exist. However, this can never work, because the nature of the mind is to be active and cultivate desires. Making the mind inactive is like trying to make water not wet. Therefore, the only solution is to find some higher activity to engage the mind in that will actually lead you to happiness long term. The second takeaway here is that we must stop viewing our own minds as an authority figure and intelligently surrender to, inquire from, and wholeheartedly serve a spiritual master and God himself. The spiritual master is someone who has seen the absolute truth and is fully realized in spiritual knowledge, having become a perfect servant of God. Their understanding is directly in line with the Vedic literature and they are expert at guiding people on this precarious path of spiritual life. Now you may be thinking, surrender? Become a servant? I don't want to do that. I love my freedom. But remember, we've already come to the conclusion that your mind is controlling you. So you are already under control. And your master is merciless and with you 24-7, always ready to force you to do something that is to your detriment. You see, the mind isn't actually working for our best interest. It just wants gratification by any means possible. This is directly opposite to our best interest, which is to cultivate wisdom and detachment from this material world, and attachment to that which is eternal, our relationship with God. On the other hand, the spiritual master does have your best interest in mind. You see, the guru engages his disciples in activities that bring them true happiness. He has actually reached the point of lasting happiness himself. And through his instructions and guidance, he leads you to the same destination. When one receives the seed of devotional service by the mercy of the Guru and Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one's real life begins. If one abides by the orders of the spiritual master, by the grace of Krishna he is freed from service to the mind. Simply hearing about these things will not have any lasting impact. You must tangibly experience it in your own life. Which brings us to the final method. And remember, we need all three in order to successfully control our mind. It's simple. We are the average of the five people we spend most of our time with. If you want to be a great musician, associate with great musicians. If you want to become a business mogul, associate with successful entrepreneurs. And if you want to control your mind, spend time around those who have already done it. This is why we have a training program for you to come and learn how to practically control your mind. Perhaps the most important ingredient to succeeding in this process is to be around others who are also striving to bring their mind under control and let go of their lower propensities. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that the senses are so strong that they forcibly carry away the mind even of a man of discrimination who is endeavoring to control them. So many people may try to conquer the mind and senses, but the fact is doing it with your own power is nearly impossible. We are like twigs, when alone we can easily snap, but if bundled together, we become much stronger and more difficult to break. Check out monkretreat.com to get in touch and see if this program would be a good fit for you. Check out our other videos to learn more about what we do. You can join our Discord and ask any questions you may have in there. And you can let us know in the comments what videos you'd like to see next. Thanks so much and see you next time. Hare Krishna.